today also very short session so nothing to worry yeah let us move on to hope so visible symbol table what are all those stuff maintained in the symbol table symbol table maintains symbol name type attribute so these three information especially data type here type we mean to say data type name of the symbol what is the name of the symbol all other attribute what are all the attribute as he mentioned he mentioned that scope and all other binding information so like such kind of stuff is maintained in its content or in within the data structure see one primary question i am asking you please answer what is the difference between data structure and database since you have completed both of the subject you should be in the position to answer the difference between data structure and database could anyone please answer either you can unmute or you can use chat window you have done both of the subject data structure or analysis of algorithm all related to one stuff only the next question is what is database don't give literal definition and all what is the difference how can you connect these two things you you think in that aspect and tell me i'm not asking the raw definition difference between data structure and database database management system or database dbms rdbms this all you have studied no so what is the difference between data structure and rdbms a year ago you have completed not now come on guys difference between data structure and database management system is the question <clears throat> what is the core difference so said at least say yes or no have the tendency of communication first try to communicate do you have answer yes or no also you try to type at least first so for every question i should put this norms first first you should type yes or no then you can give the answer do you know the difference between data structure and database management system g2 yes or no g4 yes or no i'm just asking for yes or no do you have answer or not yeah retrieve data data structure reduces complexity of a program data structure is the arrangement of dot data in database while dbms helps to store the data into system yeah very fine uh, this uh, kind of definition really i would encourage i appreciate both of you uh, d4 and g4 i congratulate you also however for the common layman perspective i'll make you to understand better data structure is all about storing the data or information anything on the primary memory any stuff anything it could be the moment it is brought to the primary memory it is called data structure anything which we store on the secondary memory hard disk or external drives whatever that secondary memory the moment we call it as dealing or storing all the four operations normally we will think no create delete update something retry these are all those stuff or data means what we need to create we need to update we need to delete we need to do something with the data we need to access 
so that data which is accessed towards the primary memory is data structure the data which is accessed from the secondary memory is database management system of course you mentioned d4 you mentioned database management system is dealt by data structure only that is fine could you got the point so even though secondary memory data while processing we need to bring to the primary memory that is fine fantastic so data structure is ultimately helpful for both primary data concern or processing the secondary data so that is a prime difference so all your uh, uh, articulation is very well that is more technical or common uh, what to say high end uh, definition you can say not the low end so hope so you would be understand now what is the meaning here data type attribute symbol table is a data structure that is what we first informed it stores information about the following variable see for example static int interest in c language i i am declaring like this how it would be stored in the data structure or symbol table interest int static first it will put the symbol name and it will put the data type of that and it will put the attribute etc size and scope all those stuff can be combined together in order to start with and understand what how the symbol is recorded that is what we are telling so what is data structure now onwards you can understand symbol table is a data structure this is highly related to the primary memory and one more thing i'll tell you i don't know the really techniques are available or not you please explore symbol table creation what it is created how it is created you may not be able to capture and record it on the file how symbol table is created provided if you are given the access with the os and your own compiler you can think of retrieving if not see c compiler is built by uh, atnt bell laboratory somebody is building some association organization is controlling in that case definitely you and me cannot access this symbol table information because it is related to only primary memory it will be in the ram memory now let us move on to the next uh, topic of discussion how this symbol table is useful in different phases of compiler very first phase is lexical analysis phase during this phase compiler starts creating the data structure called symbol table next it starts giving some entries name of the symbol something it creates and it gives syntactic analysis adds information regarding attributes like type regarding attributes such as type scope dimension line of reference use etc into the table during the syntactic phase much more information is placed into this data structure semantic analysis during the semantic analysis phase what it is doing is it will verify for semantic correctness type checking what is the meaning is see right hand side you are using only integer variable left hand side you are using float variable so if you are if you are trying to match two different data type then with the implicit conversion explicit conversion who will convert what is the original declaration made by the user <clears throat> if incompatibility exists into the situation who is the responsible person for converting to one type of data so once that conversion is happening how it needs to be updated into the symbol table that conversion is permanent or temporary so that that all matters explicit conversion if you are voluntarily converting then it will be permanent to throw the symbol table implicit conversion compiler starts converting then it will be temporary subsequent uh, utilization of that symbol will be original data type back to the original form so these kind of updation need to be given for example somebody pulls you down don't study it's waste let us go and enjoy you may change your attitude by that moment if you are really determinant candidate if you are really self motivated candidate ethical person after that setback you will come back so it's like that so this symbol table will indicate will maintain such kind of modifications also temporary conversion 
permanent conversion. When this is possible type conversion during semantic phase, exclusively semantic phase is meant for type checking. That is a primary role of semantic care analyzer. So type checking is very big topic. Even in the previous uh, unit we have discussed. If not, at the moment it's, uh, things are over, I'll be giving recap on unit three also, or uh, I'll be conducting MCQ shortly, maybe after a couple of days or coming week. So by that time, I'll give you a quick recap. Then we go for MCQ assessment. So next is intermediate code generation. During this phase, <coughs> it creates lot of intermediate variables, temporary variables. This is what unit number four we have discussed. Three address code representation, indirect uh, three address code representation, quadruple code representation. If you are trying to write a largest expression like C is equal to A plus B into two, the whole thing divided by two, something like that. You, you may think that it is very, very simpler, funny statement I'm explaining. Yes, of course you think that I'm talking about very silly matter, but internally computer cannot execute all these stuff at a time. What it does is it will convert it into three address code. It can work on only three addresses. What is the meaning is first it will create a temporary variable T1 equal to I, uh, now I'm applying order of priority, whatever. It is not a matter right now. First, we, it will start doing star. In order to do star computation, definitely A plus B answer is required. So otherwise, B into 2. Higher priority if I am considering B into 2. Then this B into 2, T2, temporary variable will be created. T1. This is what we discussed in the earlier unit also. T1. B into 2 is ready. Now to whom I need to add? A. Next T3 or I can go for original C. C is equal to T2 divided by 50. This is what called three address code representation. If you look at each and every line at the maximum three addresses only available. T1, B, two addresses. Look at here T2, T1, A, three addresses. Next look at here C, T2, only two addresses. So this is called three address code representation. So during these three address code representation, lot of temporary variables have been created. What are all the variables? Just for a sake of discussion, a smaller concept of discussion, we have brought two temporary variable T1 and T2. These also will be stored into the symbol table. So this refers symbol table for how much and what type of runtime is allocated. One more operation. This is what uh, the primary next is it helps in adding temporary variable. This answer only I had given you so far. Now I addressed through this example only this part. I haven't answered it for how much and what type of runtime is allocated. There are several types of runtime. This is what your second topic of discussion. Shortly, I would be touching upon this. What is the runtime storage? What are all the types? Static, dynamic, heap, stat, uh, st stack. Four types are available. Runtime storage mechanism. So shortly, we will be addressing. For that also, Symbol table is helpful. So in order to take decision runtime storage mechanism and temporary variable creation, this uh, what to say symbol table is useful during the phase intermediate code generation. Next phase code optimization. This is uh, nowhere related. Now it is related to what uh, machine dependent optimization. Finally, reducing the size of the complex program or you are writing simple or complex program once compiler is uh, taking into its control your program will become so complex it brings a lot of other dependencies other references it will become really complex then we need to optimize how much space how much time will be reduced especially code reduction improving the execution speed works a lot internally towards compiler design. Although you talk about analysis of algorithm, 
exactly compiler applies this optimized code optimized here execution or space both with respect to space and time it is working on that is called optimization space so there it is helpful for identifying the machine dependencies what is the meaning of here machine dependent optimization is if you look at these many variables are used t1 t2 c a and b <clears throat> whether really you have that many number of registers if you have lesser number of registers internally in your purchased computer and you have more number of variables you need to go for register optimization you need to think of when to use what register when to release or when to relieve the existing register under utilized registers so those time register allocation algorithm will come into the picture that is also you are going to deal into your curriculum nothing to worry so these are all those stuff happening towards code optimization target code generation this is called depending upon your machine core processor you may have intel 4 intel 5 the processor type suitable to the processor type it generates the code every processor varies from what and all it varies processor types are you will be telling intel 4 5 6 7 you may tell anything so how it varies is it varies based on machine code it varies based on set of registers it varies based on program counter that program counter 32 bit size or 64 bit size etc so what is the type of program counter memory bus what is a memory bus so whether you have 16 bit address memory or 32 bit address memory recently no 16 bit and all those days gone when i was started using computer those days nowadays 32 bit 62 bit 182 bit 128 bit people are even uh, students uh, themselves having gpu i don't have gpu graphical processing unit you guys are having high end machine just for playing what some games that uh, there are several games uh, i have forgotten the name of the games also just for gamification game playment people are buying gpu based processor so this memory bus registers program counter processor speed cpu cpu the processor speed processing speed so that is this is that is where you are telling 60 it a 64 bit processor 32 bit processor these are all the factors will be involved into the deciding the cost of the machine machine core or instructions instruction set of instructions so these all decides the price of the computer or capacity of the computer so what is the meaning target code generation is you are writing c program you are just writing hello world so although it is after all hello world what is the thing happening internally the machine codes are varying from one processor to processor machine codes finally executable code machine codes are different more or less i can't say different form The depending upon available instructions we look at here i'm using uh, google uh, uh, doc it gives lot of recommendation different it was suggesting me from even my brain even not started thinking of so one of the best uh, uh, what to say proof reading software i can say it will be free from grammatical and uh, spelling mistake anything you want to attempt newly you try with the google doc so hello world this program seems to be same source program is common you if you write also if i write also source program would be common but internally it will be different everybody's machine is different everybody's processor capability is different the person who purchased a cpu to mean some uh, laptop today would be much more different from the uh, laptop which i purchased 5 years ago 
So your configuration would be much more different from my configuration. Even though you belong to HP, the every year they release us different configuration. Then machine instruction would be different. So that is where it starts telling that machine generates code by using address information of identifier present in the table. So finally it generates a code using address information of identifier present in the table. Finally it needs to generate the code load store for the same. Now it will be converted into different machine code. This is not here. This first before even this it does here it is called multiplication. So how it will do is mul. There is instruction T1 comma B before even these two instruction. What else will happen is load load some register R1 comma B load some register R2 comma 2 the number 2 then multiplication will happen between R1 and R2. Now R1 is stored here R2 is here multiplication T1 then it needs to mention the register information. This is how it looks the machine code. Not even this this machine code finally it will take something 50 comma B value 89 comma 2. The, this is what exact machine code uh, anything 550 A also would be there possibility 5A. So this is how machine code will look for the instruction which you had given series of such code will be there series of this code those days when we do microprocessor program we used to load these code only 5a 8b 20a like that we used to put it in the microprocessor code the same microprocessor you can simulate using the software lab view so those days these kind of code we used to feed something goes wrong no you can't do anything you can't store also from the beginning you need to load you do you need to do the program so this is how processor will work this is how machine code will be there. <clears throat> Look at here symbol table entries. Each entry in symbol table is associated with attributes that support compiler in different phase. What and all entries will go finally supporting all the phases of compiler. Whatever are record essential, it is stored. What are all the associated operations with the symbol table? Allocate, free, lookup insert set attribute get attribute set attribute is to place attribute information like scope some of you guys mentioned some attributes which are all can be stored in the symbol table those kind of attributes get attribute so during the analysis phase the rest of the phases it will start getting and enjoying the attributes which are all available in the symbol table so these are all the operations associated some of the operation you may need to understand free removing all the entries once you are exiting from the program your program come uh, execution is uh, over then it needs to free up memory need to be freed search for your name look up every time look up is happening you will declare a symbol you will declare 10 variable one of the variable you will use end of the program before return you will use that then it needs to look up the symbol table as and when the user mentions in the program. So every time or most of the time what is the operation happening is lookup. Symbol table lookup only will be, will be happening. Especially imagine you are doing a big project, deep learning. Every time it needs to refer, refer the data frame, bring back and look up. So these are all the <coughs> operations associated with runtime environment storage organization this is what i said so runtime storage organization what is the meaning <coughs> runtime environment is a structure of target computers register and memory it is all about talking about register and memory these two are highly essential during the <coughs> execution or runtime that serves to manage memory and maintain information needed to guide programs execution. Now we have come out of symbol table. Next topic what we are moving is runtime environment. 
how your code is executed your logic you may call inbuilt function you may write your own user defined function how the interchanging interleaving is possible normally every program till date <coughs> whatever the program exist in the world will take sequential execution one after other one after other whatever the lines uh, the programmer or coder is mentioning accordingly it will start executing the moment there is a transfer in call when the transfer in execution or flow of execution sequence of execution is altered is whenever you are referring some inbuilt function cos string something then whenever you are using user defined function then program execution is getting altered so this kind of flow of execution how it is happening when alteration is happening from this uh, code of block of code the control is transferred to another block of code so how these things uh, communication is interconnected how smoothly the program is returning back to that line this is what you need to think and learn in this context that's it so for that imagine you are morning you are coming to the college or soon after the college you may visit your friend or you may visit some park or you may visit some temple you may visit mall anything but you will appropriately remember at last where you should go which address you should go that is the reason you are all um, start traveling or start going wherever you want whatever you want to do you are doing because you could remember where is your residential address wherever you move how exactly you need to go back to your home you all of you know very well about it here in the programming context not possible that same gajini film which i mentioned at the beginning so that in film surya cannot understand where to go what to go every step of his life need to be guided by the instructions similarly here also a program sequence of alteration is transferred to somewhere else how it comes back and resumes back those are all the concept we are going to discuss within this title runtime environment so the, what are all the methods available the way of runtime or the way of execution during uh, the execution time how code code is executed what are all the mechanisms so sure, quickly let us go through types of runtime environment look at your target computers register and memory how to store manage memory and maintain information needed to guide programs execution all together how to manage memory how to identify registers how to maintain information for guiding the programs execution process exactly i said see for example you have main function you are executing instruction 1 instruction 2 instruction 3 all of a sudden you have got a function call you need to go to somewhere else you may have add function this i will detail i will address in the subsequent session nothing to worry add function within that add function you are alter then again you imagine you have instruction 4 instruction 5 instruction 6 how exactly computer resumes back going from here to here in between and how exactly comes back to the i4 instruction that is called memory manage memory maintain information needed to guide your program's execution process how the program is executed smoothly how the control is coming back all those stuff are guided through this <coughs> runtime environment storage organization so types of storage or runtime environment number 1 is fully static recently you and me don't have this option to enjoy because basic fortran these are all the languages example for static why because static is the language called basic and fortran which i studied during my ba doesn't have the mechanism called pointers 
pointer is one of the dynamic allocation pointer is execution memory allocation or execution memory handling so those concepts are not included in those languages so when the compiler is working for or developed for such kind of language only it is called static allocation that's all so right from c language you have been included with pointers even in pascal uh, not available i guess because i forgot and faded away both basic fortran for uh, what else uh, the these three lang pascal these three i have learned faded away from my memory means not even i would have dealt with those language not even one time i taught for students soon after my completion of be the uh, career itself started with c language those three languages haven't uh, taught for my students although i learned so look at fully static runtime environment may be useful for language in which pointers or dynamic allocation is not possible you are not having the option called pointers or dynamic allocation every procedure will have only one activation record i need to address a lot about what is activation record that i will address in the subsequent session so for uh, so that i can have a uh, catch you on this word so i will address about it so only one activation record whenever you are having dynamic language what is dynamic c is one of the best example for dynamic language python you can't even say that's all much more dynamic so it can return multiple value the call can be transferred from one place to another place the number of parameters which you are passing the function mechanism itself function communication itself four type with return value with parameter without parameter with return value that all four combination you all guys know without return value without parameter passing with the parameter passing also with value parameter passing by value parameter passing by uh, variable parameter passing by reference three types imagine how many types it has come this is what really called dynamic language so in that situation only we need to think of some other runtime environment uh, mechanism for this without these all provisions no need to worry that is where static runtime environment comes into the picture where here fixed address variables are accessed directly via fixed address because you are not having the complex data type like structure data creation object object is a data type object is one of the data type i can say object creation there is no such a complexity no union union structure object class these all within that again polymorphism so many inherited multiple inheritance types of inheritance all those dynamic situation comes into the picture these all types of inheritance or creation is happening during the execution the moment you say polymorphism especially runtime polymorphism compilation time statically you cannot think anything it's purely dynamic in nature so by the time these all the stuff useful variables are accessed directly via fixed address little bookkeeping overhead most at most the return address may have to be stored in the activation record only one activation record only it is mentioned that also for return address calling sequence involves in the calculation of each argument address and storing it in the appropriate parameter location here there is no such kind of several way of calling only fixed so for that calculation for the fixed mechanism that's all you can remember function calling it's a fixed way of doing things when you come to c language how many ways of function call imagine the same program you will write in your way with parameter without return value one more guy will write in write in your way with parameter with return value one more guy will write in your way without parameter with return value one more guy will return in your way without parameter with return value so many ways you can write even a small program you can write minimal logic part i am not talking logic is not my matter of discussion here i am not a logical developer so here the way of mechanisms of function calling cross communication internal programming communication that itself goes more than eight methods i mean to say so that is the power of dynamic programming 
then the data structure which are all recovered would become much more complex, much more advanced. So with that static way of doing, I just stop today. Tomorrow we can start discussing about uh, the next session, stack based, fully dynamic based. So there are other type. Then once if I am addressing about other types of runtime storage mechanism, all the dynamic storage mechanism or dynamic runtime environment highly associated with multiple activation record, not even one activation record, multiple activation record. So I wanted to spend enormous amount of time in making you to understand what is activation record, subsequently why it is created, how it is created, what for it is created. These are all the uh, topics we will be discussing in the subsequent session. Maybe my session would be in the coming week only. This week I may not be able to handle any other sessions. Uh, today may be the last day of session.